All right, so about two years ago now, as you can see, on December 13th, 2018, I uploaded one of my very first camp builds around Murgle the Cat. And the reason why I decided to upload this camp build is because I wanted to show players that you can, in a sense, have a pet cat. Now, I know there are other cat spawn locations around in the game. For example, here's a location that has loads of cats at it around this billboard. As you can see, there are quite a bit of cats that will spawn here and they all seem to be different too. However, at the moment, Murgle is one of the only named cats in the game, that I know of anyways. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know everything about this game. Even though I have invested a lot of hours, I still have a lot of learning to do over Fallout 76. There are loads of things to discover. And for those of you wondering, well, why don't you just go tame a cat and then have it be sent back to your camp so you don't have to technically build around Murgle to have a pet cat. For one, I wasn't able to tame any kind of cats whatsoever, so I don't think cats are tameable in the game. I was only getting the option to pacify. For two, having any kind of tamed creature, you have a high risk of the creature dying, unfortunately. Then you have to go get another tamed creature. The good thing about building a camp around Murgle, however, is even if Murgle gets taken out, I can just hop servers and Murgle will be reloaded back into the game which is pretty convenient. And this is the same for anything else out there that you may want to build around to have in your camp. You can just build around that general area and if the cats get taken out or something, you can just, you know, hop servers and they'll be reloaded back into the game. That's not the same case with tamed creatures. So hopefully if and when Bethesda does add pets into the game, they'll work kind of like our allies that we can unlock and place in our camp. So we don't have to worry about them being taken out. But yeah, I decided to come back here and challenge myself to build a better camp because the first build that I did here, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty bad and I have improved over time. I will say before getting into all of this, since we're kind of on the topic of pets, that Bethesda seems to have some kind of plans with pets being introduced into the game. Because as you could see here, these emotes were randomly added in the Atomic Shop for a short period of time and then randomly removed. We were not able to use these emotes whatsoever. They were just there. So I don't know if this was like a hint from Bethesda or this was just some kind of huge accident, but it does seem once again that there are gonna be some kind of pets in the game because after all, these emotes are pet tricks, as you can see. So yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. Who knows, we may even be able to put armor on our pets too because I have found like a dog helmet off a of mongrel before. So it seems like something that could easily be possible. But yeah, now let's go ahead and get into this settlement build. Hopefully you enjoy this and possibly find some inspiration from this as well. Enjoy. All right, so to start this tour off, I guess I'm going to show you first off where I made this camp exactly at in the ash heap. As you can see, it's right down here in between this abandoned mine shaft and Welch Station. I'm actually going to be starting from Welch Station and making my way up to the camp here. This camp is named Murgle's Scrap Town. The reason why it's named Murgle's Scrap Town is because there's a named cat here that goes by Murgle. And, well, I didn't decide to build this little scrap town around Murgle. And, yeah, that's how the name came to be. I know, I know, leave me alone. It's not the most extravagant name. But yeah, I'm gonna be starting the tour off here at Welch Station, just because, as you can see, there's a bunch of scrap that was laid out to get to the top of the mountain. The scrap that's placed around this area in the game from Bethesda is majorly incorporated with the build. Without the scrap, this would not feel nor look the same whatsoever. I mean, there's this whole scrap road that flows through Scrap Town. It's like the people who made Scrap Town also created this scrap road so people can gain access to the settlement easier. The settlement that I created up here is kind of like a checkpoint before you venture off to Mount Blair, which Mount Blair is right up here. It's a workshop you can take control of and you do get quite a few mobs coming after you while you take control of this. So I guess for an immersive experience touring through this camp, let's go ahead and take this scrap up to the top where the settlement is located at. It's as if, you know, the people who created the scrap town also created this so people can, you know, gain access to the settlement at the top. But yeah, as you can see, there's scrap that lead all the way up here to Murgle's scrap town. This is what we got going on on the outside so yeah as you can see you can see mount blair off in the background of this build it's just overlooking this little settlement it's supposed to be like a checkpoint before you venture off to the dangers that lie up ahead so when entering in here as you see we got a guard out front <laughs> and inside here this 
is Scrap Town. Murgle's Scrap Town, specifically. It was named after this cat right over here at the coffee shop. The only information I really know about this cat is that, well, it seems that it liked coffee or is involved with this coffee shop. I mean, you can even see this painting right here. It kind of resembles a younger Murgle or something. I know we can select this painting and put it around our camps. It is a part of the wall decorations. But this one automatically spawns here with the coffee shop. Something interesting about Murgle that I wanted to point out is in her biography, it states that she is a part of the Raider faction. However, it doesn't give any reasoning on why she is. I don't know if you guys know why she may be a part of the Raider faction, or if you know any more lore about her. If you do, feel free to jot it down below in the comments. I'm definitely interested, and I'm sure others may be as well. But, as far as I know, she isn't a part of the Raider faction. She's just this random stray cat that you can find out here in the ash sheep, oddly enough. Something I do know, and I will say, it is nice having her roam around your camp. She makes it feel much more lively. And across the street from the coffee shop, I got a barbecue place. Really interesting contraption here. You know, it's as if you could make barbecue. There's also some rad stag meat that spawns on the bottom of this spit. Also, we got a little cooking stove here if you want to throw something into the oven. And my ally, Beckett, is over there as well. But yeah, the goal out of this is to make it feel as if this was like a junkyard town or a scrap town. And... I feel like I got the point across for the most part. I did have help building this as well. I'm not going to say I built all of this alone, because I didn't. I'll have the people who helped down below in the description, because I don't want to get something wrong that someone worked on and I didn't realize. But yeah, I will be having everyone that helped down below in the description. But yeah, inside here is kind of like a little shelter area. Also a radio communications tower too, as you can see with the satellite dish outside. But yeah, inside this shelter area, you can find just different places where people could sleep at. You know, while sleeping in here, you're protected from the weather conditions a little bit more. After all, this is a scrap town, so it's not the best looking inside. But it gets the point across if you want to get some rest. Also, at the top of this place, we have a radio communications area. So this is the place where they're trying to get in contact with others that may need help, or just to let others know that there's civilization here, if you're needing a place to hold out at, or if you need some refreshment. The backstory of this settlement isn't that the people here are evil or anything. They're actually here trying to help people survive in the ash heap. That was the goal. And here's the point of view that you get when you're sitting. Getting a little bit of a Toy Story vibe here with Mr. Pebbles talking into the microphone. By the way, that's what that little contraption is supposed to be. It's just a conduit mixed with an alarm clock on top of a radio. And that's supposed to be like, you know, the microphone for communications. But yeah, nothing too crazy or out of ordinary, but it gets the point across, it felt like. And also there's a map up here and this sign too, just to get the point across more that this is a radio communications tower. Hopefully people get the vibe of that up there. Anyways, going back downstairs, let's tour the town a little bit more. We're going to be heading into the market district next, which is right over here from our little barbecue dining area. This is the market district. So right off the bat here, when walking this way, you'll run into the snowman, and it looks as if it's selling the merchandise here. That's what I was going with. Made two shelves on each side, then added a sign in the center. Just to feel like it, you know, is put together by scrap and whatnot. And there's just different things that it looks like you could purchase from here. And we got a sign in the background of Mr. Pebbles talking into a microphone. Just kind of like the setup we had up in the radio communications tower. Also, I got a holiday tree here. This was sold in the atomic shop in the past around the holidays. Also, so was that snowman too. But that's what will probably bring these back around. I'm not sure though. But I don't see why not. 
but yeah. Anyways, uh, from the trading post here, we got the doctor's office. And of course, we had to use the borough's doctor's sign out front of the doctor's office. And inside here, this is what we got going on. Nothing too extravagant. But it gets the point across that, hey, you know, this is an area where you can get checked up on. I like it. It's simple, detailed, and once again, gets the point across. I feel like that's just my word during this video. I keep finding myself saying it. And by the way, all this is built in the Atomic Shop pre-built structure called the CD Shed. Overall, I felt like this building really went with the Scrap Town vibe that I was trying to go for. I mean, as you can see how it's built, it seems like it was built with scraps. My goal was to try to have different kind of structures around in this little small scrap town while trying to make everything not look the same. And the CD Shed definitely did the job. It really worked out. But yeah, anyways, from the doctor's office, in this area here, this is where if you got to go, you can go. It's where, you know, you can take care of business at. Always got to have some kind of restroom in the camp. And you can also take this way out of this area if you want. Which, once again, that was the market district. So, yeah. I will mention right here, especially, this took forever to make. Like how the foundations are at different elevations. Oh my gosh. You have no idea how long I spent trying to get this part right here to work out. Like getting this foundation specifically to snap right next to this one to make it seem like a staircase hours upon hours like not even over exaggerating like i spent an hour or two then got bored did something else then came back spent another hour or two and that's how the process went so i officially got it to snap right my gosh this setup took forever here this is a very very difficult area to build at definitely an advanced area to build at in my opinion just because there's a lot of stuff you have to build around a lot and to get things to work out correctly how you want can be more tricky just because you have a lot of things blocking your way such as this thing right here but we managed to get it to work out and it flows so nicely around it like i have to say honestly the foundations is probably what took the longest out of this build detailing yeah it took a long time as well but whew, i just want to get the point across that this part on this side was extremely difficult. Hopefully this video right here, when I officially got it done, helps you out on where you exactly need to place it at. If you want to try some kind of settlement build like this one at this location, this is exactly where you need to place it at to get it to work out here. Anyways, moving on from the market district here. Let's go ahead and follow the scrap road which is another thing that I just love about this area. I love this scrap road. It really brings out the settlement vibe here, the scrap town vibe. But yeah, right here we got a blacksmith area, armor's workbench, and a weapons workbench back here. So it actually is a functional camp too. It's not just for looks. Yeah, sure, it has a lot of details. I'm actually at max budget. And no, no budget glitch whatsoever was used for this build none whatsoever as you can see i'm at max budget period nothing stored or anything no budget glitch was used whatsoever not exactly sure how i can show proof that no budget glitch was used whatsoever i guess i could show you that nothing is stored and i'll delete this right here and just show you that i can replace it bam as you can see replaced it with no issues whatsoever but anyways, you can also go back behind the coffee shop here, and this is actually how you enter into this little area where the host is at. That, you know, takes care of the guest. There's also a bunch of junk that spawns here too, and there's two safes you can unlock as well. A bunch of junk will spawn right here in the coffee shop, and I made sure to light it up too. Actually, it seems like I already picked up the junk on this character. Let me go ahead and just hop onto another character just so I know for sure it'll respawn. So yeah, as you can see, here is all the junk. It actually does look nice. This is the reason why I wanted to show you it. It's pretty cool just having this around your camp. 
Yeah, I know it is a little darker because the lights are now not in this building. I am on my other character. Yeah, there's just loads of coffee stuff on this little rusted table. We got some cups, we got some tins, we got some pots. I mean, we got all kinds of stuff. And not to mention, Murgle sometimes comes into this room and hops up onto this little cushion seat. It's pretty cool. But yeah, anyways, there's also a level one safe in here that you can loot. And there's also a bag of cement right here on the side of this little bar. You can also find a candy fan Mr. Fuzzy down here. Some protest signs around. And something else that I wanted to show you all real quick is the other safe, which is located right here, outside of the place. It's a level three safe, so you typically get a pretty decent amount of loot from this safe as well since it is level three. Also, something else that I wanted to point out is right over here behind the counter, underneath here, you can find a Luxo Brew coffee pot. So yeah, that's some other junk you can loot here. And like I mentioned before, you can find some rad stag meat over on this grill. It's pretty neat. This grill is also something extremely unique about this area. You won't find this anywhere else around the game. So it is something to help spice up your camp to make it feel more unique. Oh yeah, and there's also a tool case over here on this bar stool, as well as another coffee cup. You'll see plenty of those laying around. And a cat bowl here too. That Murgle actually goes up to and drinks out of. It's pretty cool. But yeah, for the most part, that's the junk that you'll find around in this vicinity. There's also some wood piles over here on the side of the coffee shop as well. And yeah, you may find some other junk here and there. I was just trying to show you in general some things that you can loot around in this area if you do decide to build a camp here sometime. It is awesome seeming like you have a pet cat at your camp. But yeah, anyways, overall, I didn't really have to do much to the coffee shop because in general, it's a unique building and it stands out on its own. So all I really did was just add lights here and there to make the building pop more. That made it so all the details around in the coffee shop were easier to be seen and not to mention the junk as well that lays around in the area popped more too. And I just feel like the junk laying around is actually a good thing because it makes it feel more lived in. Also got a light behind the coffee sign up here too, just to make the coffee sign stand out a bit more as well. Also I made sure for the flag it was the Meat Week flag and not like a Raiders flag or something. I didn't want to specify this to Raiders or Settlers. But the whole backstory out of the people who are, you know, in here are good guys. They're trying to help out people survive in the ash heap. It can definitely be a, a harsh area to live in. So this is kind of like an area where people can go at to feel safe at, or it can work like a checkpoint where people stop here before venturing off into the danger. But yeah, passing the blacksmith area, we got the other end here. And I used the encampment gates, which this is a new atomic shop item, and I really like the way they look. It gives me the junkyard vibe. I felt like they really fit in here. So here's an overlook of it from this point of view. And, and what's cool is this whole scrap road leads on for a while. So, you know, the settlement actually kind of does feel like a checkpoint. I really like that aspect about it. Also used billboards too, to make the entrance feel a bit more unique. And as you can see, I combined these walls with wood walls and they're kind of like a custom junk wall. Because unfortunately I did miss out on the junk walls that were sold in the atomic shop. Man, they would have looked so good here. But I just worked with what I had. I would have used the junk walls here too instead of these defensive walls. But hey, it is what it is. The defensive walls get the point across too. And so do the custom made junk walls as well. Like over here, this was a pain to get to work. Because the tires at the bottom. But we ended up using guard post as well as this gasoline sign out front. To give it once again more of that junkyard fortress feel. I feel like that really added a lot. It really made it feel more like a scrap town for sure. But yeah, here's another point of view of it from this side again. Mount Blair just overlooking the settlement. Looks so nice. Got a guard out front. I really appreciate my buddies coming here to make this feel like an actual settlement too. It actually feels lived in. I love that. While I'm just touring it, it's cool. But yeah, I also I forgot to highlight this little contraption here that I made. I stacked two posts in between a street light, and then I made these signs onto these posts to give it like a billboard feel. 
also have a squirrel running down the street light because, you know, squirrels love to climb things and whatnot. And I tried to hide the wall mount behind this little sign to make it seem like the squirrel was actually climbing down the street light or something when you're first entering. Like, you can't really tell it's a wall mount. I mean, of course, we know it's a wall mount because we know what we can build in the game. But from afar, at first glimpse, it looks as if, you know, it's a squirrel coming down the street light. That was the goal out of it. Also, I made sure each sign talks about coffee of some sort, as you can see. Little Italy. Better sandwiches, specials, all you can drink coffee. Always open. And then on the other side, we got more about coffee. Large coffee and a jelly donut. Just to blend more with this little coffee shop that you can find out here in Nashi. This area is basically like the courtyard of the settlement. This is where everyone gathers at and talks and chit chats and hangs out, maybe jams out on some music or whatever, you know? This is where the town gets together at. I feel like it really gets the point across too because there's tons of chairs around in this area. And I'm just loving the scrap road too everywhere. Man. And just Mergle flowing around the camp. So cool. Oh, let me highlight some more things inside this building too that I forgot to mention. Um, as you can see, there are cat pictures around in this area and I also put an alien sitting in this chair. Don't know why the alien's there. The alien is not involved with the cats whatsoever, but I made sure to add cat pictures around just because I wanted to make it seem like this settlement is a fan of animals. You know, after all, this coffee shop is like a tribute to Mergle. It's weird that there's this cat painting here and Mergle just hangs around this area even after the apocalypse happened. So I tried to stick with the theme of, you know, Mergle, since this is Mergle Scrap Town. So I just added, you know, a few more cat pictures in here. That's the same picture, I mean, you can obviously tell, that's at the coffee shop too. Except it's more dirty at the coffee shop. But yeah, that's just something else, little, that I wanted to point out to you. And it's like Mr. Pebbles is trying to communicate with others that are around the vicinity or something. I don't know, I just got a little bit of some Toy Story action up in there. You know how Fallout typically does with their games with the gnomes and different stuffed animals they have set up. Like setting up the little plushies like that's just some inspiration I got from literally Bethesda. But yeah, there you guys have it everyone. That's an in-depth tour over my newest build, Mergle Scrap Town. Hopefully you found this enjoyable and you got a little bit of inspiration from this as well. Trust me, I totally understand Builder's Block. But yeah, I'm out of here though. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Till next time, peace.